For all cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, and total cancer, there was a roughly J-shaped association such that doing some amount of resistance training was associated with lower risk uh, for those outcomes, but past a certain point, continuing to do more resistance training was associated with elevated risk. So uh, are there increased uh, risks of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease, and cancer if you're doing more than two, two and a half hours of resistance training per week? It would be nice to just be able to dismiss that out of hand and say, yeah, this must be a spurious correlation. We know resistance training is good for you. There's no way that this could possibly be indicative of possibly like an underlying causal relationship. But I, I do think it's worth taking seriously, but I think it's also worth contextualizing. So in cohort studies that are looking at all calls mortality, they're primarily using cohorts of older adults, uh, which makes sense. You know, if if you're interested in the association between some behavior or lifestyle factor and dying, and you want to be able to reliably detect that effect or association, you need a fair number of people to die in your study between enrollment and follow-up. And you don't get that if you're studying 20, 30-year-olds. So most of these studies use older adults. And so, uh, you know, here here is a potential explanatory chain. I'm not saying this is for sure what's happening, but I, I do think it's at least plausible. So, you know, it could be that for older adults, people in their 60s and 70s, um, you know, with with everyone doing resistance training, there is some level of training stress that you can uh, adapt to productively. You put stress on your body, your body adapts to it, you come back bigger, stronger than ever, things are good. And then there's a level of stress past which you can't productively adapt to anymore. Uh, and, you know, the, the nomenclature typically given to that is overtraining, but basically you're just putting more stress on your body than it can cope with. And instead of getting stronger and more robust, it starts breaking down, bad stuff happens. And so it's entirely possible that with older adults, the point past which training tips over from being productive to unproductive and potentially deleterious, it could be like a pretty reasonable amount of training. So not five, six hours a week, but maybe two, two and a half hours per week. Um, so, you know, older adults already have higher baseline levels of oxidative damage, inflammation. It could be that once they're doing more than two, two and a half hours of resistance training per week, again, on average, like it, I'm sure it varies person to person, but on average, two, two and a half hours of resistance training per week, that may be more than their body can can cope with and adapt to. And instead of having a over time net reduction in inflammation and oxidative stress, maybe it's causing net increases, which might accelerate the overall aging process, leading to increases in all cause mortality and, and non-communicable chronic disease risk. That is, I'm not saying that is for sure what's happening, but that is at least one plausible explanation for these findings that I think is worth considering and taking seriously. However, there are alternate explanations. So one uh, is just that um, resistance training causally, like with pretty much any dose up to some high threshold, uh, resistance training does causally reduce your risk of all of those things, but it could be that the individuals included in these cohort studies who were doing a lot of resistance training differed from the rest of the cohort in systematic ways. So for example, um, maybe you get some sort of serious diagnosis or just some blood work comes back that looks really, really bad. And the doctor says like, hey man, like you need to get in shape or bad stuff's gonna happen. And so, you know, you say, hey, m my time is running out. I need to do what I can to prolong it. I'm just going to start working out like a madman to try to prolong my time on this earth. And so you have maybe a group of people who were already in generally poor health doing a lot more resistance training on average than maybe people who were doing less resistance training, but were overall in generally better health. And maybe the resistance training is reducing the risk in the people who were already at high risk but they still die at higher rates just because they were previously in poor health. Like 
Again, I'm not saying that is for sure what's happening, but that is another potential explanation.